the feet of the master teacher, Jesus Christ, yeah, to get a message on, from him. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, bro. Amen. The title of our lesson this morning is God is on our side. Come on, come on, come on bro. bro. God come on, on our bro. side. Look over in Joshua go, chapter bro. five. Word. If we're going to have God on our side, there's a few points we need to understand this morning. The first one we'll find here in Joshua 5. We'll begin here in verse 13 in a moment. But our, our, our first point this morning is simply choose to be on God's side. Come on, bro. Come on to be on God's side. Come on, bro. Oh, we'll look here in, in Joshua 5, verse 14, or uh, verse 13, rather. And earlier on in the chapter, on, of course, Joshua is getting ready to have their first battle in the promised land, the Battle of Jericho. And we understand they have a great victory. It's where they march around the city seven times and whatnot for the seven days, seven days, seven times. And then they shout and the walls fall down. But this is right before then. And we understand early in the chapter, he circumcises the men because he wants to make sure that they're totally right before God. And then as they're getting ready for battle, we see this event take place. Look in verse 13. Now, Joshua was near Jericho. He looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hands. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replies, but as the commander of the Lord's army, I have now come. Then Joshua fell to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for a servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place we are standing is holy ground. And Joshua did so. And then in chapter six, he gives him his Bam. message, his commission. Hey, you know, this hey, is interesting. General Joshua is getting ready for battle. And if you're a general in the army and you look over and you see a big old cranking warrior with a sword drawn in his hand, ready to go to battle, you're going to want to know, is that guy on my side or is that uh, guy yes, on sir. your side? Come on, bro. I feel a little Ooh, nervous on, here. And he walks up to this incredible warrior. Excuse me. Are you with us? Are you one of my, I've never seen you before. Are you, are you in my army? Like he's kind of just hoping somehow I've never seen this guy. Like maybe kind of sort of he's with us. Are you with us or are you with my enemies? And the answer, it's perplexing. Look at what he says. Are you with me or are you with my enemies? And what he's saying, neither. No, neither one. Wow. I'm not with you and I'm not with your enemies. I am with God. Wow. He says, as the commander of the Lord's army, I've come down here to talk to you. We understand an important message from the Lord here. It's not about, am I on God's side, or is God on my side? But have I chosen to be on God's side? You know, it's so on, we, we live in a society. We live in the Bible Belt. And the mindset from the time you're born is, God is on my side. You know, God is on my side because of where I go to church. God is on my side because of who my pastor, like, do you know who my pastor is? Do you know how many friends on Facebook they have? Do you know how, how, how incredible, how intelligent, do you know who this man is? This is my pastor. Surely God is on my side. This is my church. This Surely, is my denomination. Bro. Surely God is on my side. I spoke in tongues. I pray Jesus in my heart. I oh. went to church camp. Surely God is on my side. I grew up as a Christian. I went to Christian school. I'm in seminary right now. I'm going to be a pastor. My parents are Christians. My parents told me I'm right with God. Surely God is on my side. I have a spiritual friend. They told cool, me. Bro. They assured me. I don't need to be okay. with your group. God is on my side. God is on my side because my mom told me, loves me and I love Jesus and that's good enough. Wow. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. But we got to understand it's not about claiming God is on my side. Are you with us or for our enemies? Neither. It's about choosing to be on God's side. See, loving Jesus, Come we got to get bro. a conviction, church. Loving Jesus is not about a warm infatuation. It's not about a feeling. It's not a dramatic experience. Loving Jesus is a decision to follow him. Oh, You'll never bro. forget. 
I so appreciate Vanessa vulnerably sharing her story, but I'm sure as she shared, I know I felt that I'm sure many of us can relate. I was reflecting Amen. on all the different challenges that I had growing up and all the ways that Jesus worked through my life, even through the painful times. And yep. I remember when I was 15 years old and I was experimenting with various drugs and I got to a point where I realized something had to change my life. And I went to this random church and I said, I need you to baptize me. And he gave me the pamphlet to read. And I read the pamphlet and I read one line and threw it in my closet. And then my aunt came over and we had an emotional experience together. She brought some anointing oil. She spoke in tongues. She had me pray Jesus in my heart. And I just, I felt the spirit. It felt so good. It felt so right. Come on, bro. Later, I was baptized. Oh, man. But I was still living the exact same life. Uh-oh. Come on, I had bro. Uh -oh. No, and it, it was a total emotional, but, but I fundamentally believe that's just what happens. You get right with God, but you still kind of live your life. You still kind of have your pornography. You still kind of have the way you talk. You still kind of have your music. I mean, that's just what the Christian world is. Many years later, some disciples opened the Bible with me and showed me what it meant to be a biblical disciple, and they flat ticked me off. They showed me the study and showed me a disciple is the same thing as a Christian. And I said, excuse me, sir, are you trying to say that I am not a Christian? He said, no, the Bible is. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. I Come was on, no. flat Come angry on. with him. But then after about a year, I got my heart right and realized it's not infatuation. Following Jesus, it's not a feeling. There's, there's no random utterance that comes out of your mouth. There's no feeling of the spirit where you feel your body wiggling around. There's, there's no thing that happens to you physically outside, but it's a change bro, preach the truth, bro. from within inside. Seriously, come, come on, on bro. Yeah. Let's go, Jason. He studied the Bible with me, taught me to be a disciple. And on February 9th, 2011, almost 10 years ago, 10 years ago next week, I was baptized into Christ. Let's go, oh. bro. Come on. Oh. Let's go, bro. Oh, bro. come to a conclusion that my experiences, my feelings, I thought I was, God is on my side. God is on my side. But I had not chosen to be on God's side. Come See, on, bro. I love Jesus. At least I thought I did. What does it mean to love Jesus? Write down John 15, verse 14. John 15, 14, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. It's interesting. What does it look like to be on Jesus' side? It looks like you're doing what he says. And it's interesting here. The English wow. doesn't quite cover it. A little more of the RSV and I believe the ESV. But studying the Kone Greek, I looked at this passage in Greek earlier today. And it's if you love me, keep my commands. The word keep, it's interesting. It's written in the future tense. So if you love me, it's you will continue to keep my commands. It's not a one and done thing. It's if you love me, you're going to keep obeying me throughout your life in the future. Come on, bro. Watch out for later in John 15, verse nine, he says, as the father loved me, so I have loved you, amen. He loves us. Now remain in my love. If you keep the father's commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept the father's commands and remain in his love. He says, look, I love you but you've got to remain in my love. How do we remain in Christ? We obey, we hold, we continue to keep his teachings. But, but Romans chapter eight says, nothing can separate me from the love of God. But Jude one twenty one says, keep yourself in God's love. Come it's on, a decision to look Come at on, the scriptures, bro. to trust God, Come and on, to bro. keep ourselves, not, not an infatuation, not I feel Jesus, hallelujah, praise God. It's I see Jesus, I understand Jesus, I'm going to obey Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Right. Amen. Come on. Come on, so, Come on Jason, Damn. preach that. Love, Come on, God. Let's go. love is not a feeling. There's three words for the Greek word love. In the English, I can literally, in the same sentence, there's only one word for love. I can say, I, I love coffee. Come on, I bro. Love. But in the same sentence, I can say, I love my wife. L-O-V-E. It's the exact same thing. Now, the Whoa. Greek, 
that now obviously the extent of those loves are so much different, so much greater. But the Greek helps us out with this. There's three words for love. You have eros, which is a romantic love. Amen. You have phileo, mm. it's like a buddy love. Like, I love you, buddy. I love you, man. I love you, coffee. And then you have agape. Come on. Which is a self-sacrificing love. See, what's the love that Jesus talks mm. about here? It's not if you like me. It's not if you have a romantic feeling, a, a, a passion towards me. It's if you have a self-sacrificing devotion for me. That's what it looks like to keep my commands. Oh. See, don't get me wrong. I believe the Bible teaches that God has an unconditional love for us. Are you with me, church? Amen. Come on, bro. Yes, sir. I encourage you. Yes, God has sir. an unconditional love for you, but a relationship with God is 100% conditional. Come on, bro. Come on, come on, bro. Come on. See, the Talk love is it. unconditional. He'll love you through whatever derelict thing you decide to do, and he'll help you repent. Although the worst thing you do, it's harder to come back sometimes. But a relationship with God is 100%. It has conditions to it. We see this in marriage. I'll never forget the greatest experience of my life, December 20th, 2015. Over five years ago, when I married my bride, the love of my life, Daniela, at the time, Payan, oh, and then after we kissed, it was Woody. Okay. All right, and Woody. Then, Daniela. Woody. Oh, Woody. Woody. Oh, down the aisle, I was so nervous, and I, I, I didn't know how to smile at the time, you know what I mean? So I was looking at her like this, and the whole time she was like, you should, you should probably smile. I was just so nervous to be up there in front of all my friends. And, uh, and I knew, because we never kissed before, it was going to be our first kiss. It was like, do it like a quick little peck? Do I come in at the side? What if our noses hit? Like, oh my gosh, this is terrifying. So then finally, <laughs> you know, we get to, get to the vows and whatnot. But can you imagine in the vows, like we had unconditional love for each other, but there was conditions to the relationship. And can you imagine if I'm like, I love you, but hey, one day you're 364 days, I'm going to flat be devoted to you. Mm. But one day a year, I'm going to cheat on you. Wow. Wow. Is that, is that, does that go good with the Ooh. vows there? No, 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 no. See, it's unconditional love, but that breaks the conditions of the contract. That breaks Ooh. the conditions of the marriage covenant. It's not 364 uh -huh. days a year. It's oh, 365 on, till the day you die. Faithfulness till the day you die. See, there's conditions to my marriage. See, in the same up. way, we marry Christ. We're Come fired on. up. We go through this honeymoon stage and it's so exciting and it is almost like an infatuation and we're so excited for the meetings and I get D time and E time and P time and G time and I, 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 I love the Bible and I love my quiet times and it's just so exciting and oh my gosh, the disciples did this and, the and, then, and then what happens here, just like in marriage, I know none of the marriages can relate with this, you begin to get comfortable with each other. Oh. Talk about it, but bro. Praise God for this little thing, just like in marriage in the kingdom. We have discipling. So we're married to Christ, but then we have brothers and sisters come in and remind us of our commitment and call us back to that commitment. But if you're not come careful, on, you allow that comfort in Christ to become contempt. Mm. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And if you're not careful, you can even begin to despise your walk with God and despise the vows you made. See, this happened to the church in Ephesus. Jesus writes to them in Revelation 2 and verse 4. He says, I hold this against you. You've forsaken your first love. He says, Come consider on, how Come far on. you have fallen. Repent mm. and do the things you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove my lampstand from you. He says, look, I hold this against you. You've forsaken me. We got married when you were baptized. We had a honeymoon. It was awesome, but then you grew comfortable. You didn't change. It turned to contempt. And buddy, if you don't repent, I'm taking my Holy Spirit from you. Absolutely, you can lose your marriage with Christ. Why? Because there's conditions to our relationship with God. We got to ask Ooh. ourselves this Come morning, on. how do we know if we're falling out of love with God? Because that's important. That's important. Come on. Because I, I love marriage counseling because disciples come in and they help remind us of how awesome, like I have the greatest wife in the world. Brothers, would uh -huh. you agree that you have the greatest wife in the world? 
That's you know what I'm saying? True. And discipling helps us embrace oh, yeah. that and remember that. But how do we know if we're beginning to fall out of love for Jesus? You begin to change the terms that you had at first. Wow. See, before you were baptized, you counted the cost. You said, okay, what do I need to do to get baptized? I'll do it. What do I need to get? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll change this. I'll change this. I'll do this. I'm going to change this sin. And counting the cost, there was one more sin. Okay, I'm going to change that. You got to be committed here. Okay, I'm going to be, you got to give. Okay, I'm going to, uh, uh, what about this? I'll do it. I'll do whatever it takes. And we have a whatever it takes attitude to marry Jesus in the waters of baptism. But if we get comfortable and we don't let others call us out of that comfort and we let it turn into contempt, our commitment dies down and we start to draw lines in our walk with God. Talk about Ooh, it, bro. Yeah. And we Come say, on, bro. go this far, buddy, but no farther. I'll give this much, but no more. I'll put up with this much from this person, but no more. They've hurt me too many uh -oh. times. Their Come sins on. annoy me too much. I'll oh, change man. this much, but no more. Let me remind Come us on. of the commitment you, I, all of us made together as disciples Let's before go. we were baptized. Look in Luke 14. Remind us, bro. Let's go, bro. Let's go, bro. Come on, bro. Let's go. It's back, bro. Take us back. Oh, of course, there, Luke 14 is known as the counting of the cost chapter. Count it, bro. And we take it up here in Luke 14. And we're reminded of what it looks like to come onto God's sides. Luke 14, verse 31, Jesus is speaking. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not, he will send a delegation with others still a long way off and ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciple. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Reminded of Jesus' words here of, of really what it, what it means to be a disciple. He says there's two kings going to war. One with 10,000, one with 20. Now we know the 20,000 is going to win the war. Jesus flat lays it out. The smaller army has to surrender or they're going to be defeated. So the smaller army sends a delegation, the guy with the white flag, they say, please don't attack us. And then the smaller army can join the bigger army. What do we understand here? Jesus is the big army. He's, remember, the general with the sword drawn. We have the smaller army. It's not about us and them family. It's not about us and that denomination or us and that church or us and that rel religious person. It's about us and him, not us and them. Come, Come on. on. Come on, bro. Yeah. It's not about looking to all the other people and all the false doctrine, and all the different teachings. It's saying, am I right with Jesus? See, being in the international Christian church does not save you. Calling yourself a disciple does not save you. Being baptized in Christ alone does not save you. But it's choosing to continually be on the side of Jesus. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. You said, I want to be on the big army side. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll do anything. Disciple me. My heart's open. Change me. Come on, bro. Come on. What was the cost? Verse 33. To give up everything come on that's what i did 10 years ago that's what you did 10 years ago you know ironically i was supposed to be baptized by now 10 years ago but i wasn't fully ready to live this passage out so it took me about a week longer i saw debbie lamone had her 10-year anniversary today and i always kid with her because we were supposed to be baptized the same day but i just wasn't quite ready to fully count the cost yet you know in the same way some of us counted the cost of baptism, but it's time to, in a sense, recount the cost today. What's the cost? Everything. Total commitment to Jesus Christ. Right. And doesn't he make this clear from the very beginning of the Gospels in Matthew 6, verse 33? Oh, yeah. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Doesn't that right there, it's such a simple passage, but doesn't that lay it out for us? But how easy can we forget that? He says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. What does that mean? We're committed to Jesus, not 364 days a year, not 300 days a year, not 200 days a year, 
you and I as disciples of Jesus on the big army side, we're committed to our maker 365 days a year till the day we die. We are committed to our Lord. That's right. Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm going to remain faithful. I'm going to remain faithful. If you're going to remain faithful, we cannot change the terms. But being committed, you got to understand, it's not an opinion issue. Oh, the church is doing this. I got to go to this meeting. Of course, you're going to the basic meetings. But it's being committed to the relationships. It's being committed to one of Change the plans for midweek. Amen. Talk Leaders about meeting. it. Amen. Hang Come out. On, Amen. Bro. This Come is, on, bro. Either this is the Come kingdom on, or it's it. not the kingdom. Come if this is now normal ragtag church, go find yourself the kingdom. But if this is the kingdom of God, then we got to be committed. Ooh. Come on, Come on bro. Bro. To be committed. Talk about Come on. it. Not an opinion issue, but being totally committed to God's kingdom is the condition to you and I remaining saved and making it to heaven for eternity. Amen. 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 You know, this is a faithful church. I love this church. This is a faithful Thanks. church. I preach this message with faith to inspire us and remind us of our commitments. But just like in marriages, we all need marriage counseling. I mean, I know the Coils have a perfect marriage, but not all of us do. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of us need reminders to have great growing commitment in our marriages. We need to grow in our love for one another, grow in taking care of one another, grow in our respect and admiration of one another. And Come it's on, the same bro. thing Talk in our walk it. with God. You're never done growing in your commitment. I want to ask you right now, what area of being of a Christian are you beginning to drift in your commitments? Wow. Great <laughs> question, bro. Come on. Ooh. Is it the meetings? Is it fully engaging in these little Zoom calls? Is it D times? Is it Bible talks? Is it Bible studies? Is it your drawing lines? Whatever it is, write it down. And I want to challenge you. Renew your commitment. Renew your covenant. Have, mm. have a time of renewing your vows with Jesus. My parents renewed their vows after 10 years. Now they're going on 20. Let me tell you, to renew your vows with Jesus is to say, look, I remember I counted the cost. I'm ready to serve you wholeheartedly again. I'm sorry we're falling short. I've confessed my sin to my brothers and sisters. I'm with you once again, and all of us will be on God's side powerfully. Come on. Oh, so exciting. We have two who have counted the cost, who have gone through the studies, and have decided that the cost isn't too high, but the cost is too high not to be a disciple. And praise right. God that Miguel and June have gone through the Bible studies, become disciples, repented of all their sins, and Lord willing, they're going to join God's side today. They will be on God's side as they're baptized into Christ today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You see, God is on our side, church. If you yeah. choose to be on his side. Point number two, choose to be victorious. Let's go, Come bro. On, bro. Come on, bro. Let's, choose it. Where, bro. Let's get a running start in John 16. Check us there, bro. Come on. John 16. Let's get a running start. Come on, bro. You know, we see throughout the book of Joshua, as long as Joshua and the Israelites remained faithful to God, they continually had victory. And studying Koine Greek, it's interesting. The name Joshua in Koine Greek, which would be the Septuagint version of the Old Testament, the Old Testament written in Greek, is literally Iesus. Iesus, if it's, if it's the, the subject, if it's not, it'd be Iesu. But it's interesting. If you look in the New Testament, New Testament Greek, that's the exact same name, Iesu, for Jesus. Come Joshua on, wow. and Jesus share the exact same name. Oh, and just God. like Joshua had wow. physical battles that he no. wanted a victory in the Old Testament, we see that Jesus flat had victories, not just in the New Testament, but all time. Look over in John 16. Let me give you an idea of how victorious your Lord is. Come on, Come on take it there, bro. Come on, bro. Break it down, John 16. Bro. Verse 33. Jesus says, I have told you these things 
so that in me, you may have peace. Amen. I pray that you have peace in Christ this morning. Come on, bro. In this world, you will have much trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. See, Joshua was victorious over the armies, but Jesus was victorious over the world. Come on. Mm. Come on, bro. Take heart. Come on, Come on, brother. Take heart. Take heart. I defeated the world. I didn't give in to sin. I didn't quit. Wow. I didn't doubt. I didn't fall. The cross was the victory. See, Jesus was victorious. Jesus never lost a battle. Jesus won every time. Jesus wins every time. Jesus never fails to be successful. Come on. Amen. That's Amen. the one right there. The, on, the Bible teaches bro. that on the cross, Jesus disarmed the power of Satan. Jesus disarmed the power of sin. But what does that mean for us? Look in Galatians chapter three. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We wish you still today, sin free. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Hey, he is not one of them. Come on, Jason. Let's go. Galatians 3. Verse 26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Wow. Wow. He says, if you're a disciple, he's not talking to the world here, those who aren't disciples. He says, if you're a disciple, you brother, you sister, have clothed yourself, which means what? When you clothe yourself with Christ, when you go into the waters of baptism, he imparts his victorious spirit inside you. Mm. Oh he imparts his successful spirit inside you. He imparts his, his winning heart inside you. And when you get baptized, you join a winning team. When you get baptized, you become victorious. When you get baptized, you are totally transformed in the likeness of Christ. Come on. Come on, Come on bro. Before you're baptized, before I was baptized, we were losers. No matter how great someone is, I don't care if they're in the NBA. I don't care if they're in the NFL. If you are not in Christ, you're a loser. Because you're going to have a cranky Straight time on this earth. You're going to have a terrible time in hell for the next eternity. Amen. The Thanks, only bro. true Amen, bro. victory is found you in Christ. Preach, and if that offends you, you better flat get in Christ. Period. Period. Come on, Period. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on Jason. Before we were baptized, we were slaves to our sin. We would try to change the way we talked, but we would stumble. We would try to change the way we looked at men and women, but we kept on going back to adultery in our hearts. We would try to change the way we would think. We would try to change our attitudes towards our families, and we feel guilty, and we walked around with guilt. We'd walk around with shame. And just like Adam and Eve, after the fall in the garden, they hid from God. They were full of shame because they were not victorious. Amen. You know, at times, even as a disciple, though, you can fail to feel victorious. Mm. That's true, bro. Come on. But it doesn't matter how you feel. It's a fact. You are victorious. Ooh, Ooh. That's right. Come on, Jason. Like that. Come on, Jason. You are a winner. Stop changing God's narrative. He said it. That settles it. You are a winner. You Period. are awesome. You are great. Stop calling yourself insecure. God Come. never calls his people a sinner in the New Testament. Stop calling yourself a sinner. Stop calling yourself a failure. Stop calling yourself a quitter. Stop saying that you can't. Praise Stop the saying word, that you David. won't. Stop saying that you're weak. Stop saying that you can not accomplish the impossible. God is with you. God wants to do great things through Come you. On. And you, Come my friend, on. you, on, my brother, you, my sister, you are Christ. You are victorious. You Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It's time for you to they declare really... war on your doubt. <laughs> declare war on your doubt. Declare war on Come your on. unbelief. Declare war on your sin. Why? Because Jesus overcame all the world. And today, you and Woo. I, we're going to overcome the world because we are victorious. Come on. Come on, bro. Uh, bro. Yeah. And it's yeah, not a one-and-done victory. Woo. Victor victory. I won the championship. No, no, no. 
2 Corinthians 2.14, Christ always, not sometimes, always leads us in triumphal procession. Come on, bro. Come on. Always leads us in a state of victory. Come on. Always leads us around as winners. You're never a loser if you stay faithful. Right. What Come makes on, you a bro. loser? Quitting on Jesus. Mm, talk about it. Ooh, what makes wow, you a loser? Get away from the kingdom. Talk about it, bro. If you're weak, that does not make you a loser. It makes you a perseverer. Come mm. on, bro. Facts. Come if on, you bro. fall in a little bit, that Thanks. doesn't make you that doesn't make you a loser. It makes you someone who's fighting. Let's go. Christ always, always, always leads us in triumphal procession. Growing up, I played roller hockey. I was going to do ice. My parents couldn't afford it. And I wasn't very good. My first sorry, season, bro. the coach literally told me at the, uh, at the uh, you know, at the end of the season, you know, the end of the season party, and there's pizza, and they pass out trophies. He, oh, I was like yeah. seven years old, and he said, Jason wasn't any help to the team this year, but here's his trophy. Oh. Wow. Hey, bro, that's <laughs> messed up. Yeah. 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 Because both his sons were on the team, and they were like destined to be in the NFL. They were like cranking dudes. But I, I let it drive me, and I got on a different team, and I flat played against his team the next season and the next season, like four years later, it wasn't very good most of the time. Like four years later, we had the championship game. I got, I believe it's many years ago, but I believe I got the slap shot that won the game. And then it's incredible. And then they brought the big trophy to me, the like six foot trophy. And we all carried it together. We skated around the rink. We were singing together. And then we had pizza at night and saying, we are the champions. And I got the MVP for that season. Come, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Oh, good. Ooh. But it never happened again. Oh, no. Felt good for five minutes. See, in Christ, you always get the winning slap shot. In Christ, on, you're bro. always carrying the trophy. In Christ, it never ends. You are victorious. You are a winner. Hmm. Stop changing the narrative, family. Stop telling God what you are, but let God tell you for a fact what you are, who you are, and what's in your DNA as a disciple of Jesus, you are a winner. It's time to embrace the victory. Let me show you an insight that really encourages me. Look over in first John chapter five. Let's go, bro. Before my voice goes out here, let's bring it up for landing. Come on, bro. First John chapter five, we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn the secret to embracing this victory. Come on. How do we have victory in Christ? We all like secrets. First John chapter five, verse one. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his children as well. His child as well, excuse me. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Yes. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Wow. wow. What do we understand from this passage? Wow. The power of belief in Christ. We understand this is written to disciples. They still had to repent and get baptized. But as disciples, this is written to disciples, the power of merely believing in Christ. What's it say here? How do we overcome the world? By understanding and believing who Christ is. It says faith is our victory. What is our victory to overcome this world? The faith that you have in God. The faith right. that you have in Jesus. Faith is our victory. Come, Come on, on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Faith is our victory. Faith in believing God can do the impossible. Faith in believing that God is always going to work. Faith believing that I never need to get discouraged. Family, I put before you that we don't have to limit God. 
Imagine if all of us collectively chose to never limit God with our faith. How much great things would we see happen in Houston if all of us got down on our knees and truly believed that God would do the impossible in Houston, do things that have never been done in our lives personally and collectively as a congregation. Let me tell you, we would change this world way quicker than we ever planned. That's right. That's right, bro. Come yeah. on. Oh, I want to really? share with you two ways to have victory in your faith. Number one, you can write down Mark chapter 11, verse 24. We need to choose to never doubt. Choose to never doubt when you pray. Mark 11, 24 teaches that if you believe when you pray, Jesus is going to give it to you. Right. That's pretty Period. frankly right there. Come James on. 1 teaches don't doubt or you won't get it. So if literally I decide today to throw out doubts, okay? So here's what you do with your doubts. You guys ready for this? I'm ready, Come on, bro. Please, sure. Come on, out. Show us, please. Show us. Show us. Show us. Ready. Grab oh, your bro. doubts. I love visual representations. Come on, bro. Baby, oh, throw on, away bro. your doubts. There it is. Oh, Come on, bro. There Come on, it is. Throw away your doubts. Eat it. God's going to answer your prayers. But Amen. secondly, write down 1 John 5, 13 to 15. It teaches that if you pray according to God's will, he'll answer it. So if you pray out of God's will, some of you wonder why God's answering your prayers. Because you're not, you don't study the Bible enough and get enough advice <laughs> to know what is God's Come will. Come on, bro. Talk about Talk it. Talk about it, bro. bro. Come on. Talk about about praying it. prayers that are aimed towards building your walk with God and building the kingdom. Why is God going to answer that? That's true. Mm. So if we choose to throw out our doubt and choose to pray according to his will, you can know for a fact, okay, this is what God wants. I refuse the doubt. I'm going to pray with all my heart. You're victorious. It absolutely is going to happen. Full stop. Come That's on. it. That's right, bro. Come on. Why do I believe this? Because I've seen it. Steve and Melanie Coyle came here on the mission team and they prayed for six years. God, we're giving up our lives. We're giving up our, our lives. We're giving up our jobs. We're giving up our money. We're coming on the mission team. Let our families become disciples. We have we got a bunch of kids. Let, let some of them get saved on this mission team. We're giving up so much. Year one, nothing. Year two, nothing. Year three, bada, 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 bada. And then finally, year six of them giving up their lives in the mission field. Maria was baptized into Christ this month. Oh, oh, Maria. Maria. Oh, oh, man. Man. To not doubt. And they had to choose to pray. They knew. I know it's God's will for Maria to get saved. And guess what? It's God's will for the other four coils to come into kingdom. And if you're right. listening to this, you are next. Ooh, That's right. Come on, well, Amen. Period. Come on, I'm gonna get you. But in the same way I put before you, it's God's will to take our church higher than ever before. You know, I'm so inspired by the campus ministry. It's incredible. We literally went into this year with no Bible studies in the church. And after the first week of the campus campaign, I was in Hawaii when I heard this news, they had 104 Bible studies. Just four days after the winter workshop, they have oh, 104 on. Bible studies. Great job. Come on. Let's go campus. Disciples in the church. 104 oh, Bible studies. And praise God, because of your faith, two are being added to God's kingdom today. Amen. Let's go. Oh, come on. Amen. Let me tell you, Amen. That's not come just on. happening because we hope for a second. You believed. You come refused on. to doubt. You prayed according to God's will. And you did whatever it took to see it happen. But our goal is not to stop this year at 60. Praise God. The church is going to be 60 members today from 20 to 60 in three years. Praise God. But we want to have 60 additions this year. That's true. Come on, bro. Amen, Amen. bro. Amen. Bro. I don't know about you. I believe that's God's will for a lot more. But yeah, I think his will right. is at least 60. His will is at least 60. His will is absolutely for people to get saved. Therefore, I'm going to believe it. I'm not going to doubt, and neither are you. I have a challenge for you. Number one, make a decision to refuse to doubt that the will of God is to radically grow his church this year. Amen. Right. Come on. Right. And number two, understand real faith equals real hard work. And make a decision to share your faith daily, to be in Bible studies daily, to be involved daily with your Bible talk, to whatever it takes to win as many souls as possible. Why? Because on, we bro. 
are victorious. Let's close out an Isaiah 60. Come on, Come on bro. bro. Come on, bro. We're on the bends. Isaiah 60, verse 21. Cool. The Lord says, then all the people will be righteous and they will possess the land forever. They are a shoot I have planted, the work of my hands for the display of my splendor. The least of them will be the smallest. The least of them will be a thousand. The smallest, a mighty nation. I am the Lord. And it's time. I will do this swiftly. God says, I'll take the smallest of you and make you a thousand. The least, a mighty nation. And the Bible says, it's not you, it's me. It's not about what I'm going to do, but what the great I am will do. That's See, right. on our own strength, church, we will get tired. But when we tap into the power of God, we have the most powerful force in the universe working through us, working with us, and working all around us to take our small congregation and to turn us in to a group of thousands. Come on. You know, it's incredible. As it's the year of mountain moving faith. And of course, we recently had our, our winter workshop. And then we had the Hawaiian Island Missions Conference. And then the Church Leaders Conference in Hawaii. Danielle and I had to leave the church conference early due, due to the pandemic. But before I left, Jason the Mitra walks up to me and he gives me this plaque. Uh oh. And it's literally carved wood. One of the shepherds in LA made it by hands. And it says oh dream, because our, our group of churches is, it's called dream, disciples reaching and evangelizing all mankind. Come on. And it's interesting, what's the dream all about? Mountain moving faith. Moving the mountain, moving the kingdom, moving this world for God. See, that, that, that's, that's what we're all about in the Come dream on. geographic center. Taking our faith, and moving the kingdom, taking our faith and moving souls in the waters of baptism, taking our faith and multiplying our ministry like never before. Consider this. The Lord's going to give us the road to 100 this year. That's clear. My yep. faith knows it. I don't doubt. That is the will of God. Yep. We will Come be on. in Denver by that time, but you will be 100. You will taste the victory. I'm like right. Moses. I get to see the promised land in the future, but you get to live it. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You will be 100. But imagine, let's say 2021, you only have 50% growth. And by December, you only grow by 50%. You're going to be 150 members by December 2021. Wow. Then December 2022, 50% growth. You'll be 225 members. Then 2023, 50% growth. You'll be 337 yeah. members. Then let's say you have 50% again. December 2024, you'll be 505 members. And we follow the same pattern. 2025, 757 members. 2026, 1135 members. And 2027, 1702 disciples of Jesus Christ. If you only grow by 50%. Every single come year, on, let me bro. tell you, church, come come on. On. Will, God is on our side. Let's, go, let's bro. turn to Him, let's rely on Him, let's let Him work through us, and let's change the world for Christ and our generation today. Now it's time to do it. Amen. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. What an empower, what a powerful like that, message man. from our brother Jason, right there. Let's, let's give him another round of applause. Come on, Jason. I hope y'all are fired up because that, that message really got my blood running right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, one oh, of the yeah. points that stood out to me the most was the second point. Choose to be victorious. See, Jesus never fails. Jesus Ooh. said he got an unfailing love for us, right? Jesus, Jesus will fail. Jesus was not, Jesus would not fail to save us. But it's up to us to choose him. Which brings me to the, the, the point that stood out the most to me. Point one. You know, sometimes the, 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 the last point is usually the, the, the strongest point. It's the closing point right there. But for me today, that first point, the way we came in is the way I want to go out. Choosing God. 
And I love the way our brother Jason hit on all the false doctrines. See, in, in our generation, we want God to do everything. Yeah, Jesus died on the cross for us. Jesus have faith for us. Jesus believe for us. Jesus make disciples. Do everything, Jesus. And we come up with all of these, with, with all of these things that we believe in and all of these false doctrines we decide to go after because it allow us to sit in our sin and be lazy. It allow us to, to not have no type of remorse, not have no type of conviction. And it's just like, it's okay, I do what I want to do. Jesus got me. But as we as we saw in uh, uh, John 15, uh, Jesus tell us to keep his command. And in John 16, that, that's, how, that's how we love him. Say, so if you love me, you will keep my commands. Come on. And it's so amazing. It's so amazing. As Jason was saying, we, we got two. We got two who has made two choices. They have made the choice to be victorious, right? And they have made the choice to be on God's side. As we got two who's coming to be baptized today. Come on. Come on. So, Come it's, on. It's so incredible. Oh. It's so incredible. Our dear brother Josh Galindo. Uh, uh, he, he, his mom right here, his, his dad got baptized a couple months back, right? Come and on, now his go. mom has come to be baptized. She has studied the Bible. She has seen everything she needs to see. She has went through the scriptures. She asked the questions and she has made the decision to be on God's side the way God said you get on his side. Come Ooh. on. She, come on. She, surrendered to not, she was surrendered to not making her own choices to how she feel she should be on God's side or, or, or how somebody else may say you could be on God's side, but she chose to get in the scriptures and she chose to let obedience change her life. She has come to have her sins forgiven today in the waters of baptism. Let's go. Shortly after her, we're going to be on Facebook live. We're going to have Miguel, who also have made the decision to be on God's side. Yeah. Come on, Miguel. Miguel, Miguel has Come made the decision just to be obedient, to look in the scripture and say, hey, you know, I felt like I had a walk with God before. But as I go through these scriptures and as I truly read for myself and I just don't have some minister telling me these things, but I actually see for myself, he has chose to be on God's side. And now our team ministry is growing and is growing and God has great plans for the church here in Houston. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. With all the guests that come out today, I want to ask you a question. What's keeping you from making the decision to be all the way on God's side? Come all on, bro. All the way on God's side by on, getting in the scriptures, yes. studying the Bible, see what God really wants from us, see what he's really saying. It makes the choice to be victorious because you have chose to be on God's side. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on God's side, bro. Let's go, minute, Let's go preach minute, it. Here in a Let's minute, go. we're going to witness a miracle. Here in a minute, I'm going to send it up to uh, our, our, our brothers and sisters uh, on, on uh, our sister Bridget's screen right there. And you're going to witness the sharing and the life-changing questions of a, of a sister to be, June Galindo. Come on. Come on, Come on June. Come on, June. And, 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 and it's going to be amazing. And you're going to see a lady who has made the decision to be on God's side the right way, to be victorious to love the words of God, to love his holy scriptures, to love his salvation, to love his saving grace, his mercy, to flat out love the mission, to make disciples of all nations. Come on, bro. Come on. And I'm yeah. gonna send it up to our sister Kiki, who, who's, gonna, who's gonna start off the sharing right there for the baptism. And then we're gonna have our brother Josh Galindo, who's come down from the Atlanta church to share for his mom right there. And it's just going to be epic, amazing. So stay Come tuned, on. family. Stay tuned. Because we have a miracle on the Let's way. Go. As we send it up. To, as we send it up to our Come brothers on. and sisters. Send it up. Send it up. Come on. Woo! Come on. Wow, I'm so excited for you, Miss June. You're going to get baptized today. And I'm grateful that you allow me and my sisters to be a part of your Bible studies. Um, I just wanted to share a letter with you that I actually wrote 
um, back in December 28th wow. to the, the first woman that I was going to baptize this year. And who knew? It was Come, on. <laughs> Come on. Come <laughs> on. That's so crazy. Come on. I want to share it with you. Um, that's okay. It says, <laughs> it says, I know this hasn't been an easy journey for you, but you can be sure that all of your efforts to get to this point will be richly rewarded someday in heaven. This world is not our home. We are just strangers here, left with the task to gather as many as we can to come with us to the promised land. I'm excited that we get to go on this journey together and create many memories that we will carry with us all the way to heaven. Thank you for entrusting me with such a very fragile thing, your heart. Mm -hmm. And thank you as well for entrusting me with something even more valuable, which is your life. You are my friend. And today I am honored to call you my family. My Aww, sister. Um, yeah. So bless you. And I'm so grateful because God, you're an answer prayer because you're the first woman that I put on my push list and I wanted to baptize. And I'm so grateful that I get to be here with you on this morning. Awesome. Uh, mom, I'm just in awe just of God. Um, you're the woman who raised me up uh, to go to church, to believe in God, and uh, and just to come to this point where we're at right now. It's like, who would have known this could happen? Um, your humility just blows me away. Um, you, you, you love God so much. You're such a pure-hearted person. And, um, and throughout the whole years, for you to come to this point where you're like, I'm not right with God, it just, it, the humility just blows me away because I was in the same path as, as you, not knowing the truth. And just to see that, you know, you came to understand that sincerity does not equal truth. Yeah. It just blows me away. And God chose me to become a disciple first. Come on. And now because of that, now you have the opportunity to become a true sold out disciple. Yeah. A true person who knows exactly what is happening at baptism because we all know that the previous things that me and you I you and I did was just false it was just false and uh to see that you just put God's word above anybody yes. anything is just amazing I never thought you would ever get to this point <laughs> I never thought like I always had doubts I was like my mom she knows a lot about God like she loves mm -hmm. God and and I don't think she will ever get to understand this, but to see that, you know, you came to understand that, wow, yeah. I'm not saved. I'm not, a, I'm not, my sins are forgiven. Yeah. It just, it, 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 I know God has great plans for you. Yeah. Yeah. And what brings so much joy to me is that my dad and you are now yeah. going to be going to heaven for sure. Come on. Yeah, come on. And uh, come on. I'm excited come on. God allowed me to do this. Alongside with, uh, I'm so grateful to you, you sisters. Uh, I'm just so grateful also for my girlfriend and God's kingdom. Wow. It's incredible to see oh, God. God just works oh, and uh, And just like this is happening. And I'm just so blown away. I'm so thankful for you, Kiki, for studying with her. She always shares how, uh, how nice and just how incredible you guys are just teaching her. Like, man, I want to teach like that one day. <laughs> And uh, I want to say, Mom, I love you a lot. And I'm so excited that you will become my mother in the faith and in God's kingdom. Come love on. You, Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Miss Jude. Come on, Miss Jude. Yeah. Um, I'm thankful to the Lord for all that he has planned for me today. Mm -hmm. And I know that He's gonna work more than I. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Miss June. Miss June, we're here for you. Let's go, Miss June. Come on, Mom. Yeah. Come on, Miss June.
of your life and uh, I am just so grateful to God I get to have this opportunity yeah. um, do you believe that Jesus is the son of God that came to earth died on the cross and rose on the third day yes yeah. 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 let's go let's go Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the very first time and the forgiveness of your sins. Well, come on. Come on. Come on. And you have to be about right there. Come on. Not only family here, but all around the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Thank you guys so much. I love y'all. Let's do the best. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Congrats. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Mama June. Oh man, Mom, Mama, Mama June. Let's go, Mama June. Let's go. Uh, come on, Mama June. <laughs> Okay. So, so just step in. Yeah. 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 Come on, let's do it. 
Bye. He's going to enter the kingdom of God. Thank you to the Come on, Mom. Come on, Miss Jude. Come on. Come on, you got this, Miss June. You got this. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. New family member. Take me to the water. He is now entering the kingdom. Is it just me or am I tearing up right now? It's a seed of my dreams. Let's go. Kiki, hands. Went down to the roof today. All my sins are the kingdom of God. Let's go. Come on, Miss I've been redeemed. I'm the blood of the Lord. Mama June. all right everybody we'll be singing our closing song jerusalem amen 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 boom 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 you know it boom 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 my lord heard jerusalem when she mourned her when she mourned my lord heard jerusalem when she mourned her when she mourned Listen now. Now some people don't believe the Bible. The Bible. They say, man, you no know news. Well, well, if you wanna get to heaven, to heaven, you better find a Bible school. My Lord heard Jerusalem when she mourned her. Ooh, heard her when she mourned her. Jerusalem. When she mourned her, when she mourned, when she mourned her, when she mourned, her, when she mourned. listen now. Now some people don't believe in singing, in singing. They say it's hard to do. Well, well if you wanna get to heaven, to heaven, you better sing hallelujah. My Lord heard Jerusalem when she mourned her. My Lord heard Jerusalem when she moaned her, when she moaned, when she moaned her, when she moaned. Listen now. Now some people don't believe baptism. Baptism. They say no need for me and you. Well, well, if you wanna get to heaven, to heaven, you better go down in the pool. My Lord heard. When she mourned her, when she mourned, my Lord heard Jerusalem. When she mourned her, when she mourned, when she mourned her, when she mourned.
listen now. Battle. Now some people don't believe in loving. Loving. They say my heart is broken too. Well, well if you wanna get to heaven, to heaven, know that Jesus is the glue. My Lord heard Jerusalem wish him on her. Oh, heard him wish him on her. Jerusalem wish him on her. Wish him on. Awesome. Yeah, I can't be the awesome. only one that's here. Awesome. Come on, bro. You weren't the only one, bro. You weren't the only one, Miguel. Nice service, huh? We love y'all. It was an awesome service. Great awesome. service. What a way Thank to end you. it. It was. Awesome service. Awesome mm-hmm. service. You stand, bro. Real. Hey, Monica, you make it out to the right house yet? Hey, Ariana. Yeah, Uncle Ty. Joshua's fired, man. Come on, Joshua. I made it home. <laughs> Y'all up next. Yeah. All right, guys. Love y'all. Thank you, guys. Love y'all, guys. Love guys. guys. Love guys. Love guys. Love guys. I got that. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye, y'all. I love y'all. All right, y'all. Bye, Mary. Bye. 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 It's a turtleneck, Eric. You said what? See that turtleneck. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, snap. You need a neck tat now. That's mm-hmm. true, bro. What should I get? Mommy. That's a butterfly. Hi. My name. I was a uh, ticket. Wow. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> Y'all silly. Hey, I think, bro. Uh, maybe, maybe I get like your face tied on my neck. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> maybe I do Arthur Senior and Junior. <laughs> Let's go. Arthur's. They're gonna be telling you, "Hey, you talk to me. Can you just turn to the side?" Why don't you say it? Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Jesus is Lord, something. bro. Jesus Lord. Jesus is Lord. Lord, Amen. I, I love y'all. I got some neat. The whole Castillo plan. I love you. Love y'all. Love, love you, mom. Love you, Todd. Love you, Eric. Love you, Tracy. Love, uh, you, yeah. love you. Love you. Love everybody on the screen. Love y'all. Take it easy. <laughs> Come on, Miguel. You're next, buddy. Who, Mr. Lawrence? What that is? Who is Talair? I'm not sure. Really? <laughs> She's not here. Love you too, cousin. Can I have some like, I'm scared Leslie? of you with that hair. Mama Dolores. Can, can what I you say, Leslie? I said, I'm scared of you. Look at you. I'm scared of me too. <laughs> no. It looks good. Go ahead, now. Nah. Go ahead, now. Nah. <laughs> hey, Miss Dolores. I'm about to go, y'all. How are you? Thank you so much. Hi, Lois. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank love you. Y'all. I love you, you guys. Love you, guys. Love you, cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Girl, that was kind of. I'm glad it's over. I'm glad to get back to my fellas. Girl, you came last week.